And welcome. Hey, and welcome, you guys. Did you miss me? Your girl is back. And before we get started, please do all the things at the bottom of the screen. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, comment down in the comment section, and share because sharing is indeed caring. Also, please make sure to turn your notifications on because sometimes life just be life. And also the cash app is there if you'd like to donate to the channel. If not, I'm just happy that you're here with me. We are back, you guys. For Reasonable Doubt, season two, episode three, part two on the run, yet another Jay-Z title. And I am loving this episode, okay, you guys? I could not wait to get on here with you guys and go scene by scene and talk about it a little because they was giving us, you know, doing the things, giving us what we needed to have gave. So we kind of open where we left off, but not exactly. Jax and Sally are over at Chanel's house and no one is there. They also find out that she's disabled the location settings on her phone because she doesn't want to be found. Now, truth be told, she shouldn't still have her phone at all anyway, but I digress. So Corey calls and checks in to see if Jax has found out anything, but she's still holding on to she may have hurt herself. Mm, I wasn't going with that one, Jax. So Corey asks Daniel if she's using her credit cards recently, but so far, it's a no. He says that they should have left her in jail, but Jack says this is why she didn't want her in jail because she's scared out of her mind. Again, agreeing with Corey with this one thus far, had she still been locked up, she couldn't have ran. The prelim meeting is tomorrow at 1.30, so they'll need to work together, but they've got to come up with a plan. And you know, it's, you know, alpha versus alpha, so we're bumping heads. Half the episode, y'all. Later, Jax is with Autumn and Sally at Sally's place, and they're trying to figure out where Chanel could be. Did she say anything out of the way when she dropped off Jordan's bag? Like, did she say anything? And Sally's like, no, nah, not really. She kind of said she needed some time you know, to breathe and think. So Sally didn't think anything of it. So they're checking this bag that she left for Jordan. And lo and behold, behold and lo, there's an envelope that says open in case of an emergency. So they do just that. And there's a key for our safe deposit box inside. Now, Sally has access to it. So they need to get to the bank in the morning as soon as it opens. So the next scene, we see just that. They're at the bank. And what they find inside is papers entrusting Sally to be Jordan's legal guardian. So while we're trying to figure out, did she do this before or after she took JT out? Either way, it looks bad. Before means she planned to take, before means she planned to take him out and after means she planned to run. So Jax is going to have Daniel hack the security footage and see if they can find anything. Because, you know, Dan is the man with the plan. He can find all of the things. In the safe deposit, there's also an envelope that has pictures of Chanel's bruises. Now, Sally knew, and in fact, she took the pictures, but she told Chanel or she promised her that she wouldn't tell anyone. We have secrets on secrets on secrets in this episode, you guys. We see Jack. She checks in with Lewis on the phone, and she's totally and completely overwhelmed. He says, you know, how could you have known? Which is, is fair. She's like, she tried to tell me, but I didn't listen. Now, in the first season, she did say something like if she wanted to be treated badly, she'd go back home. And, you know, there was almost a conversation, but not quite a conversation. Now, poor Jax is sitting in this car on the phone with Lewis about to have an anxiety attack. Mama does not have her medicine with her. Like sometimes you see her take it and sometimes you don't. So I guess she's still fighting with should she or shouldn't she? So Lewis is like, okay, let's do a quick box breathing with her. And I said, thank you, Lewis. And she said, thank you, Louis. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without you. And I said, Louis, let's stay here. Let's stay here and keep continuing to support our lady. Although, judging by the end of the episode, I am a little worried about these two. I was trying to keep them together this season and we starting off good, but. Ugh. So over at the firm, Jax, Corey, Daniel and Crystal are talking about this 30 million that was transferred two weeks before JT's demise. But it's a dead end because she hasn't touched it, touched it. And immediately I thought that that was a little bit weird. So Jack says, well, why have us raise bail then? And Corey's like, well, maybe she didn't want to draw any attention or raise any red flags. Makes sense. So Jack says she wouldn't do that to Sally. She's her cousin and her closest friend. 
or she didn't ask you to do it, did she? This is what Corey is asking Jax. And she's like, no, but she knew we were doing it. So Jax suggests that she possibly doesn't know about the money, but Corey is like, regardless, it doesn't look good. So Crystal says Chanel had Chanel is no criminal mastermind. Like, let's not take this too far. At best, she's headed for the border. Hmm. Okay. Meanwhile, Daniel has got the bank footage. Chanel was just there yesterday with Adrian. Now, while I was happy to see the handsome Vaughn, because baby, he looked too good to me in a new game. I was like, baby, no, like this is not the way I wanted it to go. We kind of thought it could go that way in the first two episodes, but here we are. So the group takes a look at Adrian's IG, and it's a lot of pictures of JT. However, that did not stop him from helping to sell all his stuff. Ouch, cold world. So the website that they were using was up and running two months prior to JT's death. I mean, I have, by the end of this episode, I still have questions, but the season is progressing ever so well. So I'm, you know, committed that we will get the answers. I'm just, you know, your girls are a little anxious. So they are raising money to run away even then. This is what Corey is saying. And Jack is like, we don't know that. There's a lot you didn't know about your friend. I said, oh, okay, got you on that one. So Daniel says that Adrian was injured last season when he was a free agent. He's not playing, so he's got no, he's got number but time on his hands. Maybe they were planning to run off and JT got in the way. Now, Jax don't want to hear none of this because this kind of supports everything that Lucy was kind of suggesting, but Corey's just trying to figure out what he needs to figure out to, to win the case and get around it and navigate navigate either way they need to figure it out so they can defend her so jack says you know what if the reason she hasn't touched the 30 million is because adrian is running the show i said mm, i mean by the end of the episode she could have a point speaking of adrian we see him and chanel at a mosey wosey at the motel where she's trying on a wig trying to figure out if it's going to work for the new documents she, recount, she recounts a switching up a wig, make her feel like a cheat in. Only that didn't work for JT. So Adrian takes it off and he says he likes her better without it. And the next thing you know, all we hear is, all you gotta do is say yes. And baby, you know what happens after that. When that some song comes on, it is a kissing and a touching and a hunching. And that is exactly what these two are doing. I mean, getting down to business. So our girl Jax, she visits Sally and tells her, listen, I know you promised Chanel that you would not tell me certain things, but I need to know it all. Very much giving us your confession. So Jax tells her, listen, I don't want to tell you this on the phone, but she was with Adrian and we think that they ran away together. And she's like, Adrian, you mean JT's Minty? Yes, girl. That is the one. So she's like, you know, I thought she looked at him like a little brother. Hmm. Huh? Sometimes, baby, those be the ones. But a fair or not, that's what the public's perception will look like. And her motive, it'll be her motive for wanting to get rid of JT. So I got up here so far. We got pictures of them strategizing in the corner. We got uh, Chanel getting that, that good hug from Adrian. And then we got Jax and Sally finding this stuff in the safe deposit box. So Sally wants to know, well, what about my house? I said, well. There it is. We speculated last episode, the episode that that's where the money came from. And indeed it did. I said more secrets. I mean, this episode, like I said, is full of them. So Jax tells her if Chanel misses her prelim, then failure to appear would mean the bail bond company would keep all the money that they've raised, but now require the full bail amount, which was two million dollars and if she put her house up as collateral then they will use that to collect the full amount i said baby yikes i uh, like i said i ain't putting up no house for nobody i mean have you guys ever put up bail for somebody just just a question get down in the comments and let me know i said yikes chanel like why would you give her custody of your kid and then flee when she put her house up, I mean, I'm hoping she didn't know, but still, like, you had to know that money came from somewhere. So Sally tells Jax if she loses her house, she could just lose her husband, too. And I hate to say it. 
I hate to say it, but she should have listened to that man. You know, he had some sense in season one. So I'm like, oh, baby, 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 baby. Um, so Daniel does manage to find camera footage of Adrian at an ATM headed in the direction of Mexico. And he's going to try to get a read on the plates. Crystal be knowing too, okay? Crystal be having, having the, uh, the details too. So Corey is ready to go to the judge, but Jax wants to wait, but he wants to get in front of it. This is totally button of heads, but Jax admitted in the first two episodes that she had a hard time with relinquishing control, and we are definitely going to see it. He says he's not willing to risk the case, and he asks her if she's her friend trying to help someone on the run or her lawyer. And that's part of why Jax shouldn't have let Chanel get to her later on in this episode. But when we get to the end, we're going to talk about it just a little. So Daniel, at this point, steps outside the room because he's like, mm -mm, y'all are going back and forth and I am not here for it. And Jax starts to put the pictures of Chanel with her bruises down on the table. This is a woman who's scared and we have to help her. Oh baby we get it Jax we get it so Corey says the pictures were smart and they can use them and he can and will defend her but she needs to let him do his job and alert the authorities so she agrees and we see them go to the judge that's the scene we see up here in the middle and Jax wants to hold up the warrant for the week but Juicy, Lucy you know Lucy not juicy, very much Lucy, says, absolutely not. She could be sitting pretty in Mexico by then. Girl, you just don't know. She wants her to issue a, a bench warrant. So Jax asks for 24 hours. I mean, it's a lot of going back and forth, but that was the gist of it all because, you know, Lucy is not here for none of it. Back at the motel, Chanel and Adrian are game planning, but she wants to know when she can call her kids. He says when she makes it to Mexico, for, they have to make it to Mexico first and then wait a few weeks. So she's like, you know, I don't think this is a good idea. She should have, you know, been in Mexico and they're a day behind. Mama really didn't think none of this through at all. Like they're waiting for passports when all of this should have been on the ready before she even left. And just in my opinion, you know, okay, I ain't never been in trouble with the law and I ain't never been trying to, you know, be on the run. But it's just, you know, sometimes if you exercise a little bit of common sense. So he apologizes for the holdup and she's like, you know, maybe I could have won the trial. Now she's going to be on the run living in Mexico by herself. Because he's like, that's not what you said last night. Mm -hmm, probably not. So she's like, no friends, no family, no you. So she tells him she loves him. And he says all of the things. You know, she is beautiful. She is smart. She is kind. <laughs> he loves her too. And he finally says that he's coming with her. So she's like, she's in this position because of him. Um. No, he says she's in this position because of him. And I was like, hmm, what that mean? I have questions. I mean, I still believe, I know some are speculating that maybe perhaps um, Chanel didn't do it. I'm of the mind that she did do it. I just have to figure out exactly what these two had going on other than sneaking around that's going to affect this case. So hard ass Lucy gives a press statement that Chanel didn't arrive for her prelim and appears she has fled and may be armed and dangerous. I said, really, Lucy? Really? Meanwhile, God don't like ugly because after the statement, Lucy is getting calls with no answers. They're hanging up. So her assistant suggests a new number and a SIM. So when she pops on out, Lucy makes a phone call. Do, 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 do. She calls Nevada Corrections and gets the status of a Peter Thompson child. At first, I thought they said Peter Thomas. I said, oh, no, not from Roja. <laughs> if you know, you know. So they, she finds out that he's still locked up. So she tells her assistant, listen, never mind. I don't need to do number to new sim anymore. Sim anymore. I said, huh. looks to me like Lucy just may have a JT of her own. Oh, and this is secret number. What? This episode? Like, I feel like because she's a single mom, she might have a domestic thing herself. And maybe she's a little burnt, bent out of shape because she didn't do nothing to hers. Or maybe he did something to her. I don't know. That's just my speculation. You get down in the comments and let me know who you think she was checking up on. Do you think it could have been a bad past client? I feel like it's probably a little closer to home than that. So Jackson Corey talk over the case and he wants to censor Chanel as the victim. So he plans to go on IG Live with this lady named Brandy Michaels on her account because she's a domestic violence advocate and he's worked with her before. So these two can finally agree on something. So Corey walks out 
And walks Daniel with the partial plate. He's going to go talk to Cynthia, who was the lady that ghosted him. Now, later, we're going to just put this here. Later on, when he goes to pay her a visit at the precinct, apparently she has quit to take a job at a, gov a government agency job. Now, he tries to flirt with this guy, Renee, to get some help. I said, oh, not what would Corey Cash do? This this, this not it. So, sir tells him that he don't give a F, like kick rocks and open toe shoes. So Daniel does notice the crime alert on his computer and he asks him to validate. So while Sir turns around to validate him, he clicks and writes down the, the case number. So we see another scene. We get the LAPD comes to search Sally's home and Sally's like, we're looking for her too. Like what would the incentive be? Then she further goes on to say in Dan, in Dan, she says she put her house up as part of the bill. Do you think I would let her run and risk losing my bond? Baby Chris's face. Sally was absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. And I feel like the house perhaps had to be in her name to do it. But you did ask him and you guys are a unit. So once he told you no, it should have just been no. But Sally hard-headed and I look, I hope she don't you lose her husband behind it because I would hate to see it. Now, Mr. Lewis, he's busy working when Naima comes in and asks to take ask him to take her to her friend's house later. Mind you, she says later. He's like, I can't make any promises. I'm working about top on a Zoom. So now she gets a little huffy because she goes and checks social media. She's like, oh, they're together already. So Lewis is like, well, I guess you'll have to catch them at school tomorrow. Mind you, I guess you'll have to catch them at school tomorrow. That's what Lewis says to her. So she gets sassy at the mouth and walks up. Meanwhile, here comes Spencer talking about he got a headache and a fever. Now, Lewis can't find a Tylenol, so he's like, listen, get yourself some ginger, ginger ale and a cold washcloth, and I'm going to help you after this meeting. But before he can even get two seconds into the meeting, he interrupts him right away. I said, sir, little boy, at your big age, you couldn't do what he asked you to do or even go find a Tylenol yourself? I'm like, this this, this a whole lot. These kids be trying it. They, they be trying it, but we're going to get to the even more trying it. Because later on, Lewis is cooking dinner, and there's a knock at the door now he thinks miss desiree is there for Jax, but no she's there to pick up naima so she comes and he's like naima and he calls her in there and she's like you said you couldn't take me so i problem solved lewis is like listen i'm sorry that you drove all this way and now she's on punishment i said yes yes because absolutely not once i said you will see them at school and you don't i mean at the very least she could have said well dad you know is it okay if i ask somebody else like I said, baby, these kids will try you. If that's what you wanted, ma'am, then that's what you should have said. You want to be all sassy in the mouth. And yes, closed mouth don't get fed, but ask. Don't go behind your back and try to pull strings. So Corey does the IG live and he brings up a woman named Isabella Torres who's sitting in prison right now. And he makes a compelling speech about the system being broken. But we are going to hear this name again. So Adrian is at like a bodega, a little convenience store. He hears them talking about Chanel on, I think, the guy's phone or the TV or something. So the cashier recognizes him, asks for a selfie. And when he kind of says, like, it's a bad time, like, you know, not right now, I can't, whatever his word was, sir goes off and calls him an entitled piece of ish um, in another language. I think it was Spanish. And, you know, Adrian made a little snappy comeback. Then he proceeds to start taking pictures of him anyway as he's walking out. And he gets Chanel in the frame, too. So now they got to switch cars now. Part of this problem is, sir... When he walked in there, Adrian, you saw him looking at the cameras, which I was like, this is a bad idea. And then why would you pull that? Even though it's a rusty, dusty truck, why would you pull it up right in front of the store? I mean, right in front of the store. Like, I'm pretty sure there's cameras there, but I digress. So he calls his passport guy for another favor because now he, like I said, he got to switch the cars. So Jax is watching back the tape of Chanel being questioned and she starts to get upset and is having a moment when Corey comes in. So she's like, you know, I've known we've known each other since high school. And he's like, you know, there's no way that you could have known. He's essentially saying the same thing to her that Lewis says. But, you know, sometimes when other people tell us the same thing, it just hits us different or better. So he says that abused women are good at hiding, you know, hiding what they are going through, especially with the people they're closest to. There's nothing you could have done. So she hugs him and he's kind of caught off guard. But then he reciprocates and it lingers a little long for my liking. And I said. I hope this does not mean trouble for her and Lewis, but baby, you know, Jax. So she thanks him and then she walks out. That's little, this little top corner scene of the two of him, him hugging. You see his face? Cause he, he don't know what to make of it. 
So later they're discussing strategy because, you know, she's like, we need to do more. So it's time to release the photos. Now they can't do it, but Sally can. And just then, as they're talking about it, Chanel's face pops up on the news. The jerk at the convenience store got her photo. Now it's on TV. Jax has to call Daniel. Daniel done found somebody at the DMV to get the plate. And he's on his way, but he's nervous. So Jax is like, listen, get eyes on him, but do not approach her right behind you, which makes sense because nah, what we're not about to do is roll up on these people that's wanted. So Dallas, who is Adrian's connection, is smoking like he's on the side of the road in the car when a cop rolls up. So he's like, nah, he's not driving. He's about to get out the car. So now he steps out the car. He gets arrested because they have a warrant for failure to appear in court. Now he thought it was something else and it was this, but... Chanel and Adrian don't notice. They won't be standing around later waiting for him to bring this car. So Daniel tells Jax that the police are on their way because he hears it kind of on the, you know, the scanner. He's getting information. So she calls Lori and they, Lori, Corey, and they got to call Lucy. They want to bring her in, but Lucy is Lucy. So Jack starts to, you know, get her speech together about the closer you get to the border. Chanel can run into a trigger happy, you know, cop, which can mean another botch one for the LAPD. We start talking about BLM and all the things. So Corey's like, listen, we all want the same thing. And that's for the, that's for it to play out in the courtroom. So she agrees and, that he and Jax can go first with a police escort, two cars. Jack says no sirens. And the cops stay behind them. Also, Chanel's going to ride back with the officers. Sound cool, right? You heard what the ask was. Is she going to get the ask? Absolutely not. So Chanel and Adrian think it's Dallas. Then they see and hear the sirens. And that looked like also more than two cars to me. Like, what did I just say? No sirens, no lights. We got sirens. We got lights. We got more than two cars. So Jax hops out. She's like, I said no sirens, baby. So she pleads with Chanel. And you're like, your kid's. You know, you don't want your kids to lose both, lose both their parents and we're going to fight like hell, but this is not the way. So she kind of starts and she says, if you ever feel yourself drowning beneath the surface and Chanel laughs and finishes, because this is, I guess, a song that um, Chanel had wrote back in day. So Jax kind of gives the officers the nod and Chanel baby cries, breaks down and holds on to Adrian for dear life. I said, ma'am, ma'am. This was not the move to break when y'all been running together. Like maybe we might have been able to deny that y'all had a relationship, but I was like, whoop, there it is. You just laid it out there for everybody. So they arrest the both of them. So Chanel is locked back up and Jax comes to visit. Now they quickly talk about this song and then Jax asks her, listen, why did you run? So she's like, the world was doubting me to the point where you were too. I've seen you defend cases where you thought no one, where no one thought you could win, but you still did it anyway. But when it came to me, all of a sudden you weren't so sure. And if you didn't believe that I could win, why should I? Then when you abandoned me and pulled me after Corey, I thought there was no hope. Huh. So Jax apologizes and said that she didn't, she said she apologizes that she didn't see what JT had been doing to her. And Chanel says, you know, she suppressed it and pushed it all the way down. So Jax is like, listen, from now on, I'm all the way. And I was like, no, 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 no. So she's like, you know, she's going to do whatever it takes to be there for her. And I said, Jax is far too close to this case. And I really thought it was a good thing that she got Corey. You know, he's an expert in the whole issue. Also, it's better for her marriage and her trauma. But she kind of let Chanel in this moment guilt her. And I was like, damn, I do not like this for her. I don't feel like this is going to be to Jack's advantage. So late that night. At the firm, Jax goes to talk to Corey and says she wants to be involved now. She'd like to come on a second chair. So he asks her, like, do you think I can't I can't win this case? She's like, no, not at all. So he's like, all right, I'm going to be first chair in every sense of the word. No repeats of the bail situation. I said, <laughs> okay. So they agree. Chris finally comes home. That's Sally's husband, in case you did not know. And he's fed up. So Sally's like, where have you been? And she's like, listen, I didn't expect her to run. I thought it would be fine. And there's one too many eyes for his liking. She's like, he's like, well, now we owe the full bail amount. Um, and if we don't think of something quickly, then we're going to lose the house. So Sally's like, I can call the mortgage company to refinance. There's my retirement and I can ask my parents for help. Now, Jax's mama did call Sally rich in a flashback that we saw in season one. So they, you know, may have a little something to play with, a little wiggle room. But I'm just like, Oof. I hope I hope y'all could pull out something because I'd hate to see it. So she's like, we can figure this out. Let's talk about it in the morning. She asked him to come to bed, but Sir says he is staying on the couch. So then we see Corey. 
and he goes to visit Isabella in prison and he tells her that her appeal was denied. Chanel's case is the plan B. He wins this, they can try for clemency and that's why he took it. Hmm. She says that she's fine. She doesn't need him to do this. So he's like, you know, he needs to. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. Another man saying the same thing. So she says, it's not your fault. She's at peace with her decision and he, he don't want to hear it. So he's like, he's not going to stop until you know, she gets her clemency. So I said, so this is the real reason that Corey Cash is here. And I bet you dollars to donuts that he was involved with this lady, kind of very much given Adrian, like maybe they were having an affair or, I mean, maybe he was a supportive friend. I just get the vibes that they were involved in a little more than that. Now Jax is home and she's kind of feeling Lewis, Lewis in, and she's saying, you know, she was so scared and you should have seen the, she should, she's telling him you should have seen the photos. So he offers her support and she says, you know, she thought it best to avoid it. But now she thinks she should confront kind of, you know, tra trauma of the situation head on. We know what that means. So she says she's taking on Chanel's case and she knows that they need her, but Chanel needs her too. And she wants, she wants her to talk to him because she really needs both to work. So he's like, listen, all I need is honesty. So she thanks him and he asks about the kids. Speaking of the kids, she goes to check on Spencer and his fever, his fever is down. And I said, not the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day um, that she used to read to him when he was younger. And he kind of like, yeah, mom, maybe, you know, you've been having a bad day or two, you know, yourself. So this kind of persuades her to go and take her medication because she had really been fighting. And I'm not too sure why she had been like, we would see her take it from time to time. But when he said that, she went to the bathroom and took it like, you know. Let me try and pull myself together. Also, I feel like she needs to go back to therapy and I hope she doesn't abandon that for work and helping Chanel because she really needs to, you know, focus on herself first. And then I would say, and then her family and, and, and maybe then her job, maybe, I don't know. It's a lot, but I, you know, I don't think I'll say it again, that Jack's taking Chanel's case is a good idea. I think she's going to put the family in the back burner and yeah, just Lord knows what Corey, what is going to happen with Corey. I hope they don't go there, but that's the way they've been doing Jack's character. So yeah, baby, it's a lot. We get our final scene. Adrian is leaving the precinct when someone pulls up, he tells the guy he needs more time. And the guy's like, Oh, I'm gonna give you a ride. And basically it's not optional. So he gets in and the guy says, let's start with how I'm going to get my money. Like I said, that's our final scene and our final secret of the episode. <sighs> Adrian, Adrian, Adrian. I just shake my head. Like it gets worse and worse and worse. Maybe Chanel doesn't know about the money. And sir, do you have a gambling problem or like what's really going on here? Your girl is super duper looking forward to the next episode. And I want you guys to get down in the comments and let me know which secret this week was the biggest doozy for you. Because we got a lot. This 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 uh, recap was a little bit longer than I anticipated, but here we are. As we wrap up, I want you to remind you to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know how you liked the episode. What was your favorite part? Like I said, what was the biggest doozy? Because we got secrets on secrets on secrets. And it was a lot for you, girl. Also, I know I haven't made it to 500 yet, but I'm still going to, you know, put up this goal to 1,000 by the end of the year. So help a sister out by sharing this where you share your videos. Also, be sure to check out my other content. Like I said, life has been life. But your girl is... At this point, I'm back to it and getting things up for you. So just keep your notifications on, check your community tab, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.